Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today we are discussing the top three most common mistakes we make with watercolor, how to prevent them from happening, and how to fix them. So let's do it. Okay, so to start, I'm just gonna go through the materials that I'm painting with today. I have my B watercolor paper, my Windsor Newton Cotman watercolors in my palette, and I have three different sizes of my Princeton snap brushes. I have a size 12, a size six, and a size two. And I'd say that these are my three main favorite sizes. I also have my water and my paper towel, and I have an extra piece of paper towel that you'll need as well. Okay, so I'm gonna be going through the top three mistakes watercolor artists make as beginners. And to be honest, I still make some of these mistakes sometimes. It does take practice, but you know what? We're only human. So I'm gonna go through these on what these mistakes are and how to fix them and as well as how to avoid them. Okay, so the first mistake that we tend to make is using too much water. And I see this happening when I ask people to make a light wash of something. And so to make a light wash or a light value of a color, you need to add lots of water with a little bit of paint. So here we have, you know, a little bit of peach. We want a really, really nice light peach for our base. So you're adding all this water. And what I see people do is they take their saturated brush with water and start painting, okay? Now, the problem with this is that if you were to tilt your painting to the side, you're gonna see that a puddle is forming. And when this piece dries, it's gonna dry unevenly and create funky marks and you're just, it might not be desirable to you. So the way to avoid this, as well as getting a nice light value of a color, is to make your light value. And then when you're done, what you do is you wash off your brush in your water, run it against the side, take off that excess water, even tap it on your paper towel a bit, and then go in and pick up that color, okay? And you should have less water on your paper. Now, if you still have too much water and it's pooling a bit, what you're gonna do to fix this mistake is take up that extra water. Here, I'll just do it a little closer with your paper towel like that and soak it up or you can dry off your brush and soak it up that way okay and you should get a nice light value that is evenly wet throughout where then you're not going to get that little pool okay so that's how we can fix our pieces when we have too much water. Now, another place where I see people have too much water is when they try and do a color bleed. So I do a lot of color bleeds in my work, especially in my florals. So I'll usually have a nice light wash of a petal, and then I'll go in with green for a stem. And I like to touch my stem to one side of that petal. Now, one, I'm using a really big brush. Bigger brushes hold more water. So you gotta keep that in mind when you are going in. So I'm gonna show you what happens when you have a lot of water and a big brush and you're trying to do a nice little color bleed. You go to touch that end and it takes over that petal, okay? And that's not what you want. If this happens, the way to fix this, take your paper towel, press it down, soak it up, okay? It lifts up that color, wash off your brush, Go back in with your light peach again. Remember, I did wash it and I dried it. I'm just gonna go over it. You might see a little bit of that green. It's okay though, it happens. Okay, go back over. Even if you still see a little bit, try and mop it up a bit more. Maybe add a bit more orange to that light wash. Okay, and then when you try again, I'll show you. You can use a big brush. I suggest if you're new to this, using maybe a medium sized brush to get that one that little color bleed, wash and dry off your brush, then go into the puddle that you've made in your palette, take a little bit, okay? And if you're still unsure if you have too much water, sorry, my paintbrushes are everywhere, tap it on your paper towel. If it spreads out quite big, you have too much. If it's barely spreading out like that, you don't have enough, but you want this. A nice little boop, okay? So I'm gonna take that and I'm just gonna touch the bottom 
of that petal. So you get that nice little color bleed. And then I'll use the tip of my brush to do that stem. Okay, now if you're worried that it's gonna take over and you're just gonna ruin it, use a smaller brush. It will be less likely to happen and just kind of test out how much paint you have on your brush. But that's a way to fix it. So as you saw, I had that color bleed and I just mopped it up and I tried again. I've done that so many times, there's no shame in that, okay? But that is how you can fix it when you have too much water. Okay, so the second struggle that we have sometimes, especially for brand new beginners to watercolor, um, is you don't have enough water on your brush. Now, the beauty of watercolor is that it is a transparent medium, okay? It's not like wash or acrylic that it's an opaque paint. So especially if people are using tubes, they might use it straight out of the tube. So here, I'll just grab one of my tubes here. They'll use it straight out of the tube, put it on their palette, you know, and they dip their brush in the water and then they take all that paint and they put it on their paper. Now, that's, in my opinion, that's a bit too much paint. When you see the paint kind of building up, that means there's too much, you know? You want to see the transparent, um, the transparentness of the watercolor. You wanna see that texture of your paper. That's kind of the point, right? So you don't necessarily want this. Also, what I see happening is if you have dried watercolors, someone might have a freshly dry brush, they dip it into their water just once, and then they'll mix it with some dry paint. This was dry first. Mix, 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 mix. There's not much water, it's not creating a puddle. And then they'll go right into their painting, okay? And then it starts to get this little dry brush, okay? And it looks quite opaque. You want to add water and you wanna have that nice, so here, I'm just gonna show you. I'm, add, I'm actually taking water on my brush, lots of it dripping, creating a puddle in my palette. Okay, and then I might even dip my brush in there again, run it against the side. I want that nice, like it's still vibrant, but that nice transparent watercolor look, okay? I don't want a thick opaque paint across my page. That, if you want that, use gouache, but the beauty of watercolor is having that nice transparent look to it, okay? So when in doubt, if you don't, if your paper is starting to look like this and you're running out, you know, of color and it's starting to look dry, add more water. Water will just drag out that color, okay? Because you can always fix it if you have too much water. But I see this a lot with brand new beginners because this is a, a really different medium, you know? It's not like other paint that we've used as kids um, where you're just lathering the paint on. You need water. Water is a really important component of watercolor obviously. Okay. So I'm just going to show you with like a flower. So here I have my brush and it's not dripping with water and this is dry paint. So I'm going in, I don't have much water and I'm trying to pick up paint. Okay. Now I'm going to try and do a flower with it. Okay. And you see it's not really working. So people will go in there and try and get more paint and it'll be like, what's happening? You need to add water, okay? Even just dip your brush right in that water if it's that dry and add to it, okay? That is not the look you want. Like I said, add a puddle, you know, add water to your watercolors. Some people wet their watercolors before they actually start painting with them. They'll use a little spray bottle. I don't usually do that. I just add puddles as I go, but make sure you get a little bit of that puddle. So then you get that nice, and if, again, I'm using a medium sized brush, so I'm not picking up that, that much water. So I feel confident enough that I can go in. But if I was using a bigger brush and my brush was dripping, I would probably tap it on my paper towel first to get rid of some of the excess water. I hope this isn't confusing. Okay, and then I'll just start painting. And you get those nice smooth lines. And then usually with my flowers, I like to go right in the water and make it nice and light as we get out to the outer petals. Okay, and I just dipped it right in the water and brought it here, but I felt confident enough to do that because I was using a medium sized brush and I knew that it wouldn't take over the whole page. Okay, and then I usually go back into the middle 
and add a bit more color. Okay, and if you see any pools in your work and you have too much water like you do here, like we did there, just take up your paper towel and just soak it up just a little bit, okay? That's the look you want, not that. Okay, so for our final struggle that we have with watercolor, and this just happens because, you know, we're humans and we're working with a lot of paint and water and water drips, okay? So you're painting this beautiful masterpiece Okay, say you're doing some flowers or whatever, and then all of a sudden, I mean, it doesn't always happen, but you get a paint splatter. That's a lot of paint splatter, okay? What you can do, again, is lift up that paint. Some paint colors, depending on what paint you have, won't lift up, or it might leave a bit of a stain because they're just, some colors stain more than others, but in most cases, you should be able to lift up color and then go back in and keep painting, okay? You should be able to lift up a lot of paint splatters. Now, if you're using maybe like a bright red, I know red and sometimes purple stains, just trying to get a paint splatter, okay? That's quite a lot, like a deep red, it might stain a bit. Yeah, see, lifting it up doesn't always work. What you can do is like that quote, if you stumble, make it part of the dance. If you splatter, make it part of the flower. <laughs> okay, paint over it. That's totally allowed. That, or, let's make another little splatter here. Oh, that's a nice splatter there. Or one thing I do, which is kind of cheating sometimes, once my whole paper is done, and I'm done my masterpiece, I will take some white ink. Dr. Peach Martin's blue, Bleed Proof White Ink is my absolute favorite. You can use white gouache, you can use a white gel pen. And what I will do is use it like white out and I will just paint over those little sections to make them less noticeable, okay? It happens to the best of us. Some things we can't control, but please do not throw your artwork for a little paint splatter or because your stem bled too much into your flower and you just feel like, you know, this is awful. Keep going with every piece that you paint, you will get better, you will learn something new, you will progress in your art journey, just keep going. But I really hope that these tips helped you enough to realize how you can fix these mistakes and how you can prevent them from happening, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram and Facebook for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.